Right, Strongman fan, welcome back to the MST Systems YouTube channel where we talk all things Strongman, strength and conditioning. I'm going to teach you about programming. We do technical breakdowns, all sorts of Strongman and strength and conditioning content. So make sure you subscribe if that is your scene. Today, we're going to be going over a technique breakdown that has been requested. We did a little poll on Instagram. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at MST Systems. And Luke Stockman's log was extremely popular. Shannon has put together a little video of Luke Stockman's log from back in 2017, I think it starts, and kind of the progression in technique and things uh, that he's maybe changed and altered as he's gone along over the over the years of training. First thing I've got to say, because last time I did technique breakdown, got a lot of hate sometimes <laughs> if I say anything negative. So if I say anything negative, it's not, I'm not criticizing Luke's log. By the way, Luke's log is extremely good. It's very technical, it's, it's really technically sound. But if I do say anything, it's not a knock on that person. I'm not insulting somebody. I'm just trying to show you guys uh, the, the kind of faults and changes that you could make to make adjustments to your own technique. I'm not trying to help Luke's log. Luke would probably not see this. Anyhow, we're going to jump straight into it now that I've got the disclaimer out of the way. We're starting off with a log from Luke back in February 2017, 163. Boom. And... Straight away, I'm going to pause it because you'll notice the first thing Luke does wrong on this log, which is an extremely common mistake that people make, is he does a bent over row. If I just rewind it, he does a bent over row. You can see his arms are flexing. He's rowing it into his hip crease. And um, this is, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's just its expenditure of energy that is not needed. You should always deadlift the log fully upwards into the hip before you sit down into the lap. You don't want to row the log. Uh, but after this, um, the clean, Luke's clean is always very nice. And we can see on these uh, these log presses here, I'll, I'll let you watch the full clip first before we um, talk about it. So very strong, by the way, very strong, ridiculous. So I'm going to pause this. So there's a couple of technical points that we can go over here and look at. So first of all, Luke rarely uses, I say rarely because there was one clip in this that I uh, found, but I'm going to say never actually. Luke never uses ankle extension on the clean. So as you see him lap it here, as he cleans, what I mean by ankle extension, oh, he did use it on that rep. His, his heels came off the ground. There's another one in time he's used it. Let me check this out. Oh, I did. Let me see the second rep. Oh, yeah, he's using. Right, I take this right. This <laughs> this is different to what I first thought. I think I'm. I think I was thinking of uh, his other uh, the next video. Literally every log I've seen Luke do when he's going for these records, when he's got more popular for his log, his heels are flat. And the reason why I mentioned that in this video is because. I get so many messages about the fact that I teach ankle extension on the clean and Luke doesn't, and he's obviously like world record level log presser. Anyhow, he does use ankle extension on this. Uh, so I'll, I'll make the point I was gonna make in the next video clip. But anyway, what I was gonna say is, his clean is extremely efficient. I've never seen him struggle on a clean ever. So whether he does or doesn't use ankle extension, it's slightly irrelevant, but you can see here when he lands in rack position, he does have a really nice rack position. Does Luke? He's got nice biomechanics, and he seems he's like I never, I've never, well, I've, I've seen him in person, but from a distance, I've never been like up close to the man. But he, he looks like he's got a huge shelf, so his rack is very stable, very strong. His elbow position is pointing directly forward to the wall in front. He has a very good rack position, and because of this, he's able to generate a lot of force um, through his leg drive. So here's the, the first mistake though on the dip that he makes. So on this uh, first dip here, as you can see. He's dipped too fast and too far. And those two things are extremely common in strongman. And they usually go hand in hand. Because if you dip too fast, then you have no feedback neurologically. Like your proprioception gets all out of whack because you're going so fast, there's no eccentric control. So you can't feel and find the sweet spot of where you're ankle dorsiflexion range is limited. So ankle dorsiflexion, guys, is your ability to just track your knee over your toe. And that is the most important um, piece of mobility you will need for a good log dip. Because 
A good log dip, it, uh, you know, when you dip on a barbell or an axle, you can open up at the hip more. Now you do want to open up at the hip on a log press dip, but it is very hard to open up at the hip properly as you would like a weightlifter because of the size of the implement. The implement will move. So you have to rely on a lot of dorsiflexion which as you can see here, Luke has dipped extremely far, too far. His right leg is slightly internally rotated and his, his, his hips actually rotated as well to uh, kind of make up for the, the lack of range. So this dip goes to pot. And the next mistake is he puts his head through too early, which means this lockout is, I mean, I know he says 160 for three, but let's be honest, it's 160 for two, isn't it? Um, on his next um, clean though, Again, similar rack position, consistency is there, nice and perfect. His dip here, what he does is, because he's a good athlete, he's now done that first rep and he's got loads of feedback from that first rep. He knows that he over-dipped there and he knows that he popped his head through a touch too early. And he corrects it here, which is pretty cool. But you'll see that he doesn't dip far enough. He, his dip's a little bit too short, I would say, on this one. But much better rep. Third rep, I believe, is the, the best rep where he um, corrects everything and he gets a, if we try and pause it, he gets a deep dip. He's not externally, ro he's not internally rotated on the right leg anymore. His dip is extremely deep and um, this rep is, uh, yeah, really strong. Perfect. As we go into the next video clip, guys, this is from February 2018. So this is the exact same set, which is why we've put these together. And you'll see that from, from February 2017 to February 2018, a full year, Luke's made quite a lot of corrections to the log. And the first thing you'll notice is his lap. So he deadlifts the log fully up into the lap position. So that's the first correction that he's made. And I don't believe he ever rose the log again as we go forward in these videos because Obviously from 2017, 2018, he's made these corrections. So this is how you want to stand up with the log guys, is you wanna basically fully deadlift it into the hip before you sit down uh, into the, the lap position. So he gets into his lap position and you'll notice now that his heels stay down. So this is another thing that he's, he's changed, which I find weird actually, because ankle extension should make the clean feel more powerful. So it is strange that he um, changed this. However, th this is the point I wanted to make before because I get a lot of messages about um, whether you should extend on the ankle or not. And quite frankly, the old, it, 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 it should be, it should always be more powerful and more efficient to get ankle extension on the clean. It just should be because it's the end uh, portion of triple extension. It's just how it works. However, if you have absolutely no ceiling, say, say your press ceiling height is here and your clean ceiling height is here without ankle extension, then you're never going to reach that ceiling because the press is always the limiting factor. So in that scenario, it doesn't really matter. And a lot of people, a lot of people are going to fall in that category. Probably 70% of people will fail the press before they fail the clean. However, if you fall into the 30% of people that fa that feels that they can press anything and they fail the clean, then if you're failing at that same portion of the clean, which is the kind of the, the last part where you need to roll it into, into rack, that's where ankle extension speeds up the, the, the rotation of the log. So if you do fall in that category, then... It, you would need to go back to the drawing board and learn to extend for your ankles. And it is a worthy technique to learn because then you'll be able to extract your press strength uh, properly because you won't be limited by the clean. Uh, however, like I say, more, more commonly, people will be able to clean more than they can, they can press. The, the, the next point I want to make is if you're starting out on log and you're first learning, just learn with ankle extension because it's just better, you know, and it will carry over to more things. You'll get better uh, transfer to your stone load because when you do a stone load, it's a very similar pattern to a log clean, but you want to go on your ankles as the last part of the extension, etc. Keg load, sandbag loads. So if you're starting from scratch, guys, learn the ankle extension. But Luke removes it from 7, 2017, 2018, he removes it. And his clean is really good, guys. His clean is, is, is perfect. And even when he did that world record attempt, his clean was not a limiting factor. It didn't even look too difficult. So, you know, he doesn't need to learn that technique at all. He would be, he, it would take him so long to relearn that, that it's not worth it because he can just spend more time focusing on his press, if that makes sense. So anyhow, 
Another correction Luke makes here is his dip is much more efficient. It's shorter. Look how much shorter it is, guys. Boom. So there. That's his dip. It's much shorter than if we go all the way back over here to the first rep where he over-dipped. Look at the difference in the uh, the depth of the dip. It's um, quite substantial, really. You know, it's, it's, it's quite noticeable. So this set here looks a lot more refined. He's still got that perfect rack position. Um, he's still got that um, lovely dip and extension because uh, as well, watch his uh, feet when he does a push press, you'll see that he comes right through onto his tippy toes. See how high he's extending through there? This is a really good extension um, on the push press. Really, really good extension. Look how high he is. His hips are fully through. His glutes are contracted. He's, he's nice and vertical. His quads are locked. A lot of people make the mistake, guys, of not finishing their extension on the push press. So what happens is their legs are slightly bent or they're not fully through onto their tippy toes and they're going to lose a lot of power. That's why Luke's push press is so efficient. So... Overall, from 2017-2018, he makes a lot of corrections and the log starts to look a lot better. A lot of um, power leakage has been removed. So April 2018, 180 for three. So this is a couple of months after the 160 for three we just showed before. So let's see if he's got ankle extension here. I think he's just got flat feet. Oh, we can't really see. Oh no, he's got a bit of ankle extension again. This is random. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. Very strange. Yeah, they're moving a little bit. Hmm, how strange. But again, dip, drive, rack, head staying back a little longer as well, which is great. Could He could have done with, on that last rep, this is the thing with Luke, is he gets better at this as the years go on, but you can see here, when someone's struggling at lockout there, what he should do is he should keep his head where it is there. But what he does is he brings his head through, and this actually, you can see the log just come forward a little bit. So he's having to really fight to save that lockout because of the, the change in the, the the change in the pressing line. So this is April 2008. This is the same session, I believe. Let's see if he extends on his ankles. So yeah, perfect ankle extension. Perfect clean. That was really good. Yeah, this is a really good log. This is pretty much the technically one of the best logs you'll see. So deadlifts it into lap, sits down, doesn't, this is another thing, he doesn't spend too long in the uh, lap position. So he spends a second or so, but then as he's here, let's pause this on this ankles. This is what I mean by ankle extension on the clean guys. Boom, you see he's coming up onto his tippy toes there. That's why a lot of you are lacking. It, it really helps, honestly. It speeds, look how fast the clean lands in rack. Bang, powerful. And this dip, he's got a nice dip. He doesn't over dip on this one. He's got a, with the dip, sometimes we'll say, I'll oh, have a short dip or have a deep dip, etc." Don't think about a specific type of dip. Think about your dip. <laughs> Sounds strange, the word dip. But basically, what I'm trying to say is, you're going to be limited by biomechanics, by ankle dorsiflexion, and just by um, your individual um power output positions. What I mean by that is everyone's gonna develop force from a slightly different joint angle. So that's why you need to control the eccentric on your dip. You need to do pause dips in, in your warm ups and on skill sessions. And you need to find for you, the individual, what is your most efficient and most powerful position to apply force into the log push press. Because some of you will be able to dip extremely deep and generate loads of force. Some people will need a really short, sharp, big Z style dip. And other people will be somewhere in between, kind of like where Luke is. So you need you need to control the eccentric and you need to stop thinking about... If someone's saying to you, do a short, sharp dip, they're probably saying that because that works for them. But you need to just think, no, no, I need to learn my individual dip mechanics and what works best for me. So moving on from this 190... Mm, 200. So this is October 2018. And his ankles are flat. This, this man is giving me mixed signals, I'm telling you. So his ankles stay completely down. Clean, still strong, obviously. Push press is good. Head goes through too early. Is that a rep? Is that even a rep? I don't think that's a rep, Luke. Sorry, <laughs> not that you care in the slightest. Four years ago, I no lift you. 
Um, but yeah, this is, I mean, it's a good log, don't get me wrong. Technically, it's, it's, it's great. Um, his head goes through too early. This is a little bit of a mistake. See, it's a similar thing to what I said before, guys. When he's at this point here, he should keep his head back until he locks the log out, then bring it through and he'll be more stable. This is one of the best cues I can give you for, to help you log push press, is keep your head back until you've locked it. If you start to grind, look at the log. Don't start doing this, which is bringing the head forward, because as soon as he brings his head forward, the log will go forward as well. Look at this, as soon as he pushes his head through, you can see the log goes there. You see it move forward? Really noticeable. It goes for about two inches. Then he's got to fight it. What he actually needed to do there was step forward. And you can see him start. You see his left leg starting to flex. And he needs to step forward to save it. But, oh, he does step forward. But, um, oh, and then he, he regains control. His arms are still bent. And then he, I think he gets the, the down command. Um, yeah, I wouldn't personally have given that. But, you know, it doesn't really matter, does it? Anyway, on to this May 2018. So this is the first time we've got Luke on a wooden log here. And I think, I don't know whether this is his first time as well, but um, interesting that this isn't his best uh, set of log. And you can actually see him learn as the sets go on. So no ankle extension. And also this log is a little smaller. And you can see here that his perfect rack position that he's had in every single video, he doesn't have a perfect rack here at all. You can see his elbows are down a little more. It just doesn't... I think because of the size of the log, it didn't rotate as much as maybe what he was expecting because I think the, the, the wooden logs are slightly smaller diameter. So this dip as well um, isn't great. And his head goes through. Again, his head goes through... Buddy, fly. His head goes through far too early because he... Perfect uh, extension. Look at, look at how much he's extended there, guys. On his tiptoes, quads locked. Glutes squeezed. And then, boom, he's there. He should keep his head there, but he fires it through and he ends up losing... Um, oh, God, that was maybe the wrong rep. What the hell rep is this? Oh, there he is. So he ends up losing it because head goes through too early. You can see it, really obvious. Let's watch it again. So head goes through too early and you just can't lock it. It's got to step forward because if you put your head through too early, the log goes with you. Log follows your head. So... Anyway, as he goes on with this set, he's starting to learn the wooden log, which is really cool. I love watching athletes do stuff like this because it just shows how much proprioception and awareness they're able to create in the moment. So he's starting to get a better... He's changed the position in the hip on the clean. It's landing in a better rack position and he's starting to get into his flow and he's starting to go full Stoltman on this shit and fuck it up. Head goes through too early on that rep again, which caused him to have to step forward to save the lockout. Um, and... Let's see what happens on this next one. I haven't really watched uh, this far, to be honest with you. Oh, head stayed back there. That was a bit of a better rep. You need to be a tiny bit more patient with that head back, and that would have been that avoided the stepping forward. If he kept his head back, he wouldn't have done the little tippy toes. Oh, perfect example of keeping your head back. Perfect example. So those last two reps, he put his head through when he was grinding. He had to walk for a ballerina. This rep, he's gassed, he's fucked, his tries are going. But look at the technique here. So he keeps his head back. He's looking at the log, yeah? He's looking at that motherfucker. And he's saying, I'm going to lock you out, bitch. And in, in the previous reps, he was bringing his head through. And on this rep, he stared at that cunt. And he's looking at it. And he's like, fuck you. And he manages to lock it out, stood still. Beautiful. So this is a more recent video now. So we're fast forwarding to like prime Luke Stolt on the log. And this is uh, Giants Live. Um, unfortunately, Giants Live camera is like a mat, like a wasp just fucking flying around. So sometimes it is difficult to see exactly the technique. But you can see here, if we go back, he's, he's completely, at this point in time, I believe he's completely removed um, his ankle extension. Yeah, he has. Uh, but his dip has become pretty much perfected. So yeah, his heels are totally flat at this point. His dip is short but short because that's the amount of range that Luke needs to create force he's mastered the depth of his dip at this point he's also um, much more stable overhead because he's learnt the the timing pattern of when to bring his head through because it looks like he's bringing his head through fast but he's, he's, he's not it's just that the log is being pressed extremely fast basically so when you press the log fat basically there's a sweet spot there's a sweet spot with the log where you should bring your head through so if you're pressing fast it can look like you're bringing your head through fast 
Um, but you're just timing it perfectly. That point where it's time to go through, it's coming through. That point where it's time to go through, it's coming through. When you do a max log and you hit this point, you should stay until you're like, right now I come through. So, so that's why it looks like he's bringing his head through fast, which is why oftentimes people get confused with the head through cue because they send me a video of someone with a 230 log repping 140 and go, oh, he's bringing his head through straight away. And I'm like, no, no, he's not. He's timing it perfectly. It's just that it's fast. It's, it's happening like this. Uh, obviously, when it's a max, it needs to slow down. Anyhow, uh, Big Evan, Big Evan keeping his head back as well. Look at this. He's looking at that log, and boom, as soon as he's, he gets to that point, that sweet spot, he's, he, did he strict press it? What a legend. Glad. Hey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't, didn't see that before. Yeah, so this dip of Luke's is really good. I'm going to skip this because he just reps forever, the, the absolute savage. I think he gets 150 for nine. Which is a good set, let's be honest. High rep log is horrendous. Clean, this is a good thing about log for reps as well. Log for reps can really expose a clean weakness. So if that ankle extension was a problem, this is where he starts to struggle, but he doesn't even seem to be a problem for him that clean. Um, so yeah, well done Luke on that, class. Oh, he's going for a 10th. I thought me he got 10 reps. What a savage bastard. Did he get 10? Oh, did he get that lift? Why does it say nine? God knows. Anyhow, world record attempt. What's world record? Filmed live. Um, again, let's look at this. This is kind of like Luke at his peak, isn't it? So as he comes up here, he deadlifts the log into his hip. The thing that I like about Luke as well, watch his feet. Watch that this is a perfect angle for this. The, he's got his feet facing directly forward at the start, which is, I'm assuming, how he deadlifts. And as he gets to the top of his clean, he pops a little bit of extension. So he pops his hips and look at his feet externally rotate. Bang. Yeah, that's pretty cool, that, because now he's getting, he's gone from his lap stance to his, um, or his deadlift stance, sorry, to his lap stance. And, 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 and I'm assuming this would be where he wants to press from, a little bit of slight external rotation. So clean wise, his shoulders are behind the log, elbows are high, um, logs directly into his uh, belly and he starts to clean, boom, log is just above his belt, lovely extension with the hips through, ankles stay completely flat at this point in time, now he's completely eliminated ankle extension at this point in his log lift, perhaps he decided that it wasn't for him or maybe he didn't even notice, maybe as he got bigger, and his biomechanics changed because obviously he's gained a lot of weight. Maybe it just became second nature to do that. Um, but when he's in this um, full rack position here, you can see he's perfectly stacked. He stood vertical. The log is directly through mid foot. Elbows are pointing directly forward towards the wall in front. Head is up and back. And then his dip. His dip is perfect because at this point... Like, like I said in the last video, he's mastered his depth. He's dipped far enough that he's reached the limit of his ankle dorsiflexion, but he's just on the limit. He's not tried to go past it. Therefore, there isn't any compensation happening in his, um, well, further up the chain. So his, his heel's not raising. You know, he's not got any internal rotation of the hip. He's, he's stacked. He's strong. He drives and... Um, If we can pause. Yeah, there's a little, tiny mistake here, actually, uh, which I, I've just noticed. All throughout the other videos, I've said that his push press, he has extended fully through onto his ankle, quads are locked, hips through, etc. Here you can see he hasn't finished his extension at all, uh, actually, to be honest with you. I wish I could say he has, but look, you can see his right quad is 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 bent, his left one is a little bit straighter, his left ankle is further off the ground than his uh, right one. So there is some mistakes in his, his push press extension there. Boom, so you can see his ankles are even, his quads are locked, he's just finished that extension, he's through. Whereas on the world record attempt, he is, um, yeah, he's just a little shy, isn't he? But this is the thing, guys. This isn't a knock on Luke, by the way. I've got to say this because um, everyone will go fucking mad. It's harder to be perfect at maximal weights. But this could be... Did he... Did he? Um, yeah, he smashed this lift still, but he's still got some... 
And look, look how much further his head head is back now, guys. Yeah, look at that. Now that he is at these maximal weights, it's more exaggerated. You have to keep your head back. And look, he's, he's waiting. He's looking at the log. He's looking at the log. He's staring at that motherfucker. He's back. Look, at he's nearly locked. He's nearly locked. And then he gets to the sweet spot. This is the sweet spot I'm talking about. And then he comes through. Bang. So even with a slight mistake in his leg drive, because of the position of the press, because of being patient with his head back, because of looking at that motherfucker and saying, I'm going to lock you out, instead of thinking, oh, head through. Uh, you don't think head through. It's the worst cue. Honestly, I hate it. I go to so many strongman comps and there's some fucking absolute weapon on the side. Head through, head through, head through. I'm like, shut up shouting that shit cue. Like, it's so terrible. Like, it's, it's terrible. Drive, wait till you, like, until you know where I'm about to lock out, then go through. You don't, you can wait, you can, you can literally lock out and then come through, but you don't need to. As you know, right, I'm about to lock out, then you come through. If you're, if you're grinding and you bring your head through, you've lost it instantly. Don't do that. Right, anyway, next one. This is a 230 kilo attempt by Luke. So it's a bit difficult to see on this video because it always, you know, fucking, like I said, the camera giant sounds like a wasp sometimes. I prefer to just look one view me. But then I am breaking down technique. I'm not your average viewer. So the dip is short. Um, the, like I said, by the way, the clean, by the way, guys, hard to see his feet, so I can't see what he's doing, but the clean is just ridiculously easy. So like I say, he doesn't need, oh, oh his feet, his feet stay planted, don't they? Yeah, beautiful. Dip's good. Oh, did he, um, let me just watch this through in full first. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Oh, okay. So what happened there was, guys, is he obviously dipped and something didn't feel right. Let's see if we can find out what it was. He also doesn't finish his extension. Yeah, you can see this is a um, problem with when, when it gets heavy, guys, is it, it does get difficult to make everything perfect. But you can see the same thing happened on this log as the 220 log is he doesn't look at his feet. His feet hardly even move. They just slide back. Boom. They just slide back. No ankle extension on the push at all. Um, so you can see this is why the log didn't go as high as it he expected because I imagine Luke has the press strip. I imagine if Luke had the perfect dip, the perfect drive, and the log went to the height that it's you know supposed to, he has the press strength to lock this out um, for sure. But it's just a little bit too low, and the reason for that is because of the miscue um, here. Now, when you get a log on your shoulders and it feels heavy, as soon as you do a dip, you'll know that it's incorrect. I can't tell from the front what went wrong on this dip other than potentially it went a little bit too deep. Maybe he tried to, maybe it felt heavy in rack and he over dipped to try and get more force. But then you can see this right leg is further forward than his left leg. He's starting to get that same um, dysfunction and positional change that he had on the first log that we looked at. But because he's older, more experienced, etc., he's gone, nah, fuck, that's wrong. He's corrected it. He's gone into a bit of a shorter dip where he doesn't have that dysfunction. But then, like I say, that extension for his ankle to finish his push press isn't there. And he just slides back. So the logs don't go as high as possible. Um, but overall, Luke Stockman's log is, even back in 2017, that first video, it's really good. You know, he's got such efficient positions. He's really biomechanically built to uh, have a big press. I think what he needs to do to... Um, you know, get that 230 attempt is uh, just focus on those technical, I mean, I'm sure he knows this, I'm not sure why I'm even saying it, it's mainly for you guys, but he needs to focus on those technical breakdowns that are happening at the 220 kilo mark, 
which is basically the fact that his clean spot on, so don't need to focus too much on that, his head back and pressing strength is awesome. So he doesn't need to focus too much on that. However, his dip mechanic and his extension, that's the worst thing that's, that's breaking down at these big weights is, I believe it's because, because I, obviously I, I log as well. If you don't know, I'm a fucking bit of a boss on the log. So I know this shit works. When it feels heavy in rack, you can start to think to yourself, I want to change something because it feels heavy and hard. But you don't need to change anything. You just need to do it all perfect. So I think what's happened there is he's tried to over dip. Then he's realized, no, no, that's not right. He's done his dip, then he's missed his extension. What he should, the only thing he should be thinking of, in my opinion, when that logs in rack position is his extension because that's the cue that's failing him that's the technical breakdown that's happening so he needs to do his dip like a robot but then he needs to extend through pop hips come through glutes squeeze quad locked ankles extend and that log will go much higher and it will come through and that is exactly the same that i will say to you guys is when logs get heavier don't change something don't try to because basically, right, if you think to yourself, I need to change something that's logs heavier, what that means is your whole training cycle has been wrong because you, you are doing a position under repetition so that you can do it the same under heavy load. So you don't go, oh, it's heavy now, I need to change it because that means you've practiced wrong. So you need to make sure that you have that mindset going into a, a big max log as well. You need to trust your positions and be confident in them that they're the most efficient because you've trained them to be. You need to make sure that you execute the same plan that you have throughout your whole training cycle on the max attempt. Also, things that are common mistakes that you guys would want to look at on your own log. Ankle extension on the clean. Like I said before, if you're just starting out, just learn it. If you have a little, if the clean is a limiting factor, nip it in the bud now and learn it. If you think the clean is never going to be a limiting factor, you've you've dedicated five years to log and you've never used ankle extension, then yeah, it's going to take you a long time to relearn it. So perhaps it's not worth the time investment for you. Perhaps it's just worth you know plugging along as you as you are. Dip mechanics: make sure that you dip nice and slow, slow eccentric, good control, so you know how far you dip. And make sure that you finish your extension on the push press. Don't have flat feet. Don't have bent quads. Make sure you squeeze your glutes. Fully stand up straight. It's just a jump, guys. And uh, final one, the most uh, the most beneficial one to most people is be patient with keeping your head back. Don't put your head through. And if somebody shouts head through on a log, tell them to fuck off. Right, that's it. That's the uh, Luke Salty breakdown. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like, drop a little random shit comment and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time, you fat sweaty strong men.